Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm gonna show you a basic introduction to differential inequalities. We're gonna motivate the idea, we're gonna tell you what they're about, and I'm gonna present a, a basic result and we'll prove it, okay? So let me share my screen with you and we can get down to business. Okay, differential inequalities. Now, we all know that inequalities have a very practical place in mathematics. They give us an idea of the size of things, an estimate, if you will. They also give us a location for things. Now, inequalities are also very easily satisfied. Any sort of assumptions, they're much more easier to satisfy an inequality than it is for an equality or equalities, if you like. Now, the focus on this presentation is to talk about a special kind of inequality called a differential inequality. Now, essentially, a differential inequality is what you get when you combine a derivative with some sort of inequality. So how does that work? Okay, well, when derivatives and inequalities are combined, we refer to them as differential inequalities. And where is this going to go? Well, in future videos, we'll look at how differential inequalities can be linked with better understanding solutions to non-linear initial value problems and differential equations. Okay, so what about a really basic differential inequality? One that you'll all have seen in, a, say, a first course in calculus. Well, this is pretty easy. If the derivative of some function y is positive for all points in some interval i, then a first course in calculus tells us that y is increasing on the interval, okay? So that is a basic example of a differential inequality. Okay, so that's pretty basic. Let's, let's ramp it up a bit. All right, here's the result that I'm going to discuss. The result involves a differential inequality and it's usually in, uh, associated with the names Gronwall, Reed, and Bellman. These, these three mathematicians are well associated with differential and integral inequalities. Okay, let's have a look at the theorem as it stands and then we'll talk about the proof, okay? All right, so let I be an interval of the real line, let tau be a point in the interval i, and let u be defined on i and used non-negative, it's some sort of function, and in particular it's differentiable on i. If there is a non-negative constant k such that this differential inequality holds for all t in the interval, then u satisfies this kind of inequality. Okay, now on first reading, it, it looks a little bit strange, but here, basically, you've just got two differential inequalities, compactly written using the absolute value signs. And here, what does this tell you? It tells you that every function who's, that, that satisfies four, the inequality four, is bounded between two other functions. And I'll give you a picture of that a bit later. Okay, so if this is true, then this is true. Okay, so let's go through the proof and uh, and see how we go. Now, I'm going to talk about the case where t is from the interval i and it's greater than or equal to tau. The other case is, is pretty similar. So how does that work? All right. Okay, well, let's talk about that case. So if I get rid of the absolute value signs here, I actually get two differential inequalities. I've got that one and I've got that one. 
okay? Now, if we start with this part and I rearrange, so I bring the KUT to the other side, I get this kind of inequality. Now, this kind of inequality looks a little bit like a first order linear differential equation, except I've got a, an inequality rather than an equality. So if you think back to a first course in differential equations or a second course in calculus, how do you solve first order linear ODEs? You use an integrating factor. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing here. The, the fact that it has an inequality doesn't make a difference. So how does that work? Okay, so I've got this inequality here. I can form an integrating factor. So I look at the coefficient of u and I form e to the integral of the coefficient, so e to the kt, and I multiply both sides of the inequality by e to the negative kt. So I do that and I realize that now this is a special, so, so this has become this. Now I realize that this is a special product. It's the, the derivative of the product of u and e to the negative kt. If you use the product rule and expand this, you'll get that, okay? So this is very similar to how we solve first order ODEs, okay? So let's, let's keep on going. So what I would do now is integrate both sides, keeping the inequality. So I integrate from uh, tau to t, because we're assuming t is greater than or equal to tau. So I integrate there, the zero stays the same, the, the DDT will cancel and I use the fundamental theorem of calculus to get this expression here. What I can do now is rearrange, get u of t on one side, and I get, oops, and I get this. Okay, and remember this is for t greater than or equal to tau. Okay, so that, agrees with this when t is greater than or equal to tau because the absolute values will disappear then, all right? Okay, so we worked with this inequality. We're still working in the case where t is greater than or equal to tau. Let's work with this inequality now. And the idea is very, very similar, okay? You, you start with this, you rearrange, and you get an integrating factor of e to the kt. And you get this... Uh, this sort of lower bound. So here you've got an upper bound, here you've got a lower bound, and when you put those together, you get this for t greater than tau, where the absolute values are removed. Okay, so if, if I was to summarize geometrically, what's, what we've shown so far is the following. So far, what we've shown is... Let's say this is, uh, here I'm just using the, the special case tau equals zero, yeah? You've basically shown that u has to stay here where t is on the right-hand side of, in this case, tau equals zero, okay? So you've got two exponential curves here. Okay, so we've got this inequality for t greater than tau or greater than or equal to tau. What about the other case? Well. Very similar, I'll skip over that pretty quickly. When t is less than or equal to tau, you just follow the same, the same uh, arguments as in the previous page. The only difference is you don't integrate from tau to t, you integrate from t to tau, okay? So just to summarize, if from this in a differential inequality, you come up with this, and from this differential inequality, you come up with this. Okay, so I won't skip over that because you essentially you're just uh, you're just uh, repeating the argument. Okay, so really there's a big correlation here between the differential inequality and basic first order linear ODEs. So geometrically, what have we actually shown here? Well, let me draw a picture. We've got this conclusion here, okay? So what does this mean? Well, I'm gonna draw a picture. I'm just gonna basically extend this graph down here 
in the same style with 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 tau equals zero okay so if i draw that there and that there i've got one exponential curve there one exponential curve there and here i've just taken the case tau equals zero and this this value here will be something like u of zero and it tells you that the solutions are sort of squeezed or the, the u function is squeezed between these two curves okay so let's look at, at um, the theorem just just one more time what is the point of this theorem the point is that when we deal with non-linear differential equations and initial value problems we don't know what the solutions are so think about trying to work out something about you without actually knowing what it is okay you know it might satisfy an inequality but you don't know what it is exactly because non-linear differential equations are so hard to solve this is a very, very important and useful result. We can use it to prove all sorts of interesting things like uh, answering questions, when do uh, initial value problems have one solution? How can we approximate those solutions? What about the existence of solutions? All these sort of really deep questions. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this presentation. Hope you got a bit of a taste for simple differential inequalities. I'll be continuing these series of videos on differential inequalities uh, very soon. So I hope you can join me for the next presentation. See you later, everyone. Bye.